Hello everybody, uh, we are going to start learning module 4 now. Learning module 4 um, is dealing with flow passing a cylinder, flow past the cylinder. The, the problem to be considered in this learning module is shown schematically in figure 1 here. So we will have a laminar parallel flow which is passing a stationary cylinder. As uh, you probably know from fluid mechanics, the flow configuration in, in this type of problem is, uh, is highly dependent on, on Reynolds number. Reynolds number defined based on the diameter of, um, of the cylinder. Um, in small or extremely small Reynolds numbers, uh, smaller than 10, the flow does not generate any recirculation regions. So this figure, figure two, kind of gives an idea of the different flow regimes that you expect in this problem. So if the flow is less, if the Reynolds number is less than uh, 10, then we have a uh, basically a creeping flow, a flow smooth passing through with no recirculation regions. If the Reynolds number is small, but more than 10, mainly between 10 and 40, then two recirculation regions or two vortexes are going to be formed downstream of the cylinder. In this case, the flow field does not change with time and it remains as is. Um, therefore, you can expect to have a, a steady state solution for the flow field. However, if the Reynolds number is increased to uh, beyond 40 uh, and less than 20, 100,000, then we will have a, a different flow field. In this flow field, the two recirculation regions which originally uh, located downstream of uh, the cylinder are going to be uh, unstable, meaning that they will detach from the cylinder and they move along the direction of um, the, the main flow, the parallel flow. So this means that our uh, flow field will be highly unsteady. Therefore, we cannot use the previously um, used configuration of a steady state flow field. So we have to deal with unsteady or transient configuration. So in this learning module, we will be modeling two cases. We will model a case in which the flow field is steady case B of figure 2 here and then we will proceed and set up an honest steady model uh, which uh, generates a flow field similar to what you see in in part C of figure 2 right here. Uh, the phenomena that we observe um, here in part C where the recirculation regions or vertexes are detached and they move with the flow. It's called uh, von Karman vortex trail or vortex shedding. We will try to simulate this phenomena using ANSYS Fluent uh, in the next step. So in order to generate the two configurations that uh, I just explained, we are going to uh, use different fluid properties. Remember that in case uh, one, this should be actually be two. So in case one, we're trying to generate a Reynolds number smaller than 40. Let's say we want a Reynolds number of 20. Uh, we consider the cylinder to have a diameter of one meter in both cases for simplicity. And then we, we tweak the fluid properties in order to generate a Reynolds number of 20, case one, and a Reynolds number of 1200 in, um, in case two. In order to achieve that, we keep the free stream velocity for both. I'm sorry, the, the free stream velocity will be one meter per second in case one, and it's 10 meters per second in case two. Density of the liquid uh, or, or, uh, or the fluid is going to uh, be equal in both cases. It's about one kilogram per meter cube. However, there's a significant change in the dynamic viscosity or mu. Uh, we will have a 0 0.05 pascal second in case 1 and 8.33 times 10 to the negative th minus 3 pascal second in case 2. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and start the uh, simulation. I'm running the workbench first. Yeah. 
it will take a few minutes to run the package usually okay now I'm gonna drag fluent and drop it right here then I right click on the job oh, maybe we, f we first save save the project uh, I would like to save this in a specific location so I carry the address place paste the address here and I call this module 4 and then I save okay then right clicking on the geometry and initiating design modeler okay once I have the design modeler I click on Z axis to be on a XY plane then I'm going to define a new sketch here uh, in order to do this sketch it's always good to turn on the grid and the snap major grid spacing um, let's say one meter minor steps payment per, per major I want to have 10 and this should give me a pretty uh, decent um, grid okay now I go to the draw I will have two circles basically one for the entire solution domain and one for the um, uh, the, the cylinder at the center. I start with the big uh, circle first, so I draw a circle starting at the center. This is going to be pretty big, so I first do this, then go to the dimensions, click on the dimension. So this is now almost four meters, but I want this to be pretty large, so I decide to have a, a circle, a solution domain of about uh, 10 meters. So this is the solution domain that we are going to uh, deal with. Next thing, uh, we want to generate a surface. So I go here to concept, surface from sketch, I choose the sketch, apply, and then click on generate. This generates the whole solution domain with for me. Now, my cylinder is going to sit right at the center of this guy therefore I will need another sketch so I go to XY plane click on sketch go to sketching another circle starting right here roughly and then go to dimensions click on this guy and assume I consider the diameter to be uh, 0.5 therefore the uh, geometry uh, the diameter will be uh, one meter as we want okay uh, next thing I will need to divide this uh, the solution domain into two sections because I want two boundaries here I want the the left side of this solution domain the boundary of the solution domain here to be uh, a um, an input a velocity input and the right side of this domain to be uh, an output for that reason uh, I'm going to continue this sketching here I will draw a line basically from the center all the way to here and one other line from here all the way to here now next thing to do I will go ahead to the modeling and I want to generate um, line from a sketches so basically I use the lines here to generate in a sketch I use the uh, lines to generate uh, use the sketch to generate a line click on generate this will generate uh, a line for me if I click here all these lines are, are bounded together next thing I'm going to project this uh, do a projection of uh, this li these lines onto the surface that I have so I go to tools uh, then click on projection the edges I click I hold uh, the control bottom and then I choose all these lines I have selected four edges then the target surface will be 
my solution domain apply then I click on generate if I do that then I have more control over uh, the surfaces now I can control this surface I can control this surface or if I'm trying to select an edge I can select this edge and I can select this edge independently so is correct about these two however we don't really need those okay so we are almost done here except for uh, we need to uh, suppress the line bodies because they may uh, cause problems uh, in the solver so I click on the bodies here go to line body right click and then click on uh, suppress body this does not change anything I still have the control over the surfaces that I want but this kind of will be um, kept here it will not be transferred to the measure and solver okay finally click on generate and I close the uh, design modeler next step is generating the mesh click on the mesh generator Okay, it's a 2D situation, so I click on Z. If I click on Generate Mesh without any control, then you will get a very uh, poor quality mesh. So this might be good for some uh, computations, but for this type of unsteady uh, computation, we need a more detailed and um, good quality mesh. For that reason, I click on Mesh, I go to Insert, um, face meshing then I click this surface and hold the control bottom click the other surface come here and click apply and this will make sure we have a mapped meshing here so now if I click on generate mesh I generate a pretty decent mesh but I want to have uh, more control here I want to have more clustering near near this solid boundary for that reason I right click on the mesh again go to sizing in the sizing I choose uh, this boundary hold the control and this boundary and then um, click apply I go to element size change it to number of divisions and choose 50 so I have 50 grid points here and I, I need this to be a hard requirement. I change behavior to hard. And I do need to have a biased situation because I want more nodes clustered close to the solid boundary. So I, uh, I define a, a, a bias factor of 50. Uh, as you see, this uh, clustering is not in the direction that I desire. It's actually the opposite of what I want. So I come here to the reverse bias and click apply. Uh, I have to select them first I guess if I click this and this and click on apply then now I have the nose being clustered near the um, solid boundary now again I click on generate mesh and if I click here then I have a quite detailed mesh um, inside the solid boundary although we generated a mesh but we don't really care about the quality there because there will not be any flow uh, therefore we can just carry those uh, uh, poor quality mesh there um, I want to have more nodes along the uh, around the uh, perimeter here so I want to impose one more sizing uh, I select this boundary and this boundary click apply I change the element size to number of divisions and I choose again uh, let's say a hundred I get a hundred grid points I want them uniformly distributed but with a hard requirement if I click on generate mesh then a pretty good uh, mesh is generated here for me in fact I can do a more refined mesh by increasing this to let's say 100 and increasing this to 200 this part 
requires some experience so you will gain that experience by doing some computation you will know that some mesh qualities are not good or the number of nodes may be small but this looks like something good note that the the variations of the cells is pretty uh, pretty uh, gradual we don't have a sudden change from a very small node to a very big node here um, forget about inside the uh, uh, the domain here because that's a solid we don't really need to worry about that okay so we our mesh is generated the next step here is to do uh, named selections so I click on this boundary right click named selection I call this inlet this will serve as the inlet to my solution domain the right side of this will be my uh, outlet or pressure out call it outlet um, now clicking on surface I click this surface push control click the other surface right click name selection this is my fluid uh, area click OK and this tiny little cylinder I click it click on it right click go to create name selection and call this solid area okay now I click on update um, and I get some warnings um, but that should be okay so I close this and I open the setup when I when the uh, fluent launcher appears I make sure I always click on double precision and I have uh, multiple processors in this computer so I'm gonna select 8 and then click OK this will uh, initiate the solver for me okay now if I click on check it's gonna check the mesh for me when you see it done here with no uh, errors or anything usually this means your uh, your geometry is good then we don't need to change anything here in the first step because first we want to do the case one in which we expect this to be a steady state situation so I keep this as steady later on I come back here and change it to transient so planar 2d model so um, can go ahead go to model we do not need to turn on energy equation here because we're not solving for uh, temperature field we can just keep that as is it's a viscous laminar flow we keep everything the same materials we have to define a new material so I open this guy I um, make a fluid let's call that fluid one fluid one according to my um, problem has a density of one kilogram per second and a viscosity of 0 0.05 so I call it 0 0.05 and click on change create it's gonna tell me should I overwrite air and I'm gonna say no so that a new fluid is generated here and I click on close solid part does not really matter here because as I said we're not solving the flow in solid regions you can keep whatever material we have which is usually aluminum cell zone conditions I click on here I have two areas fluid area and solid area remember I define these areas in the mesh generator if I click on fluid area by default it's going to be air I don't want it to be air I choose fluid one and I click OK the solid area just to be sure it's solid and it's aluminum I don't really care now next step is defining the boundary conditions uh, the boundary conditions is is tricky in this problem because um, if I click on inlet it's going to give me first of all as you see it's a velocity boundary velocity inlet boundary by default uh, the velocity is uh, define normal to the boundary so if you choose if you don't do not change anything here uh, the velocity will be perpendicular 
and normal to the bound. This is not what we want. We want this to be a parallel flow. Therefore, I click on different options. I give instead of the magnitude and uh, normal to boundary, I choose components in which we, I can give X values and Y values. Um, if you go back to the definition, the free stream velocity in case one is one meter. So I'm going to click on here, choose one meter per second for X component of velocity, the Y component of velocity everywhere on this boundary is zero, making it a, a parallel inlet, essentially. So click on OK. The outlet is a pressure boundary, uh, pressure out boundary, um, and there's nothing you can, you should change here because we, ex we expect the flow to enter uh, atmosphere outside. OK, so this is OK. Then I can go to methods here. Um, everything is second order. That's good. Controls. I do not need to change the uh, under relaxation factors. The th important thing I need to change, I should change the residuals. Basically, my convergence criteria from 10 to the minus 3. I change that to 10 to the minus 6. As you see, I make sure the residuals are plotted um, and printed to console so that I know uh, the, the, the situation of my computations. Then I click OK. Um, I'm almost ready to start the computation. I go to initialize. I do a standard initialization. I do the initialization from the inlet. Click on initialize. And now I'm ready to actually run the computation. I choose a large number of iterations, but I know this probably converges way earlier than that. So click on that. We'll go through some steps. If you, if you give it enough time, it should converge. It may take anything from a few minutes sometimes to a few hours, but let's see. So you can monitor the residuals by looking at these numbers and as you see they are uh, decreasing and when all the residuals are less than 10 to the minus 6 um, then the solution is considered to be converged. Note that we have three residual sets uh, one for continuity equation, one for x velocity and the other one is for y velocity. Take a few more seconds for it to converge, to fully converge. If your mesh has a better quality, this can take shorter. If your mesh is um, lower quality with a lot of weirdly shaped cells, this can take longer. So the convergence behavior is highly dependent on the quality of the mesh. Okay, now the calculation complete. My solution is converged. I can click on OK. And in order to see what is happening, I can click on graphics, contours. Let's plot the, uh, the velocity component. This is the, the velocity that we, we see. I can also click on pressure, look at the pressure distribution, or I can also do a path line, or I'm sorry, a, a um, stream function.
Okay, now um, how can I show you the, the recirculation regions? If I choose the velocity magnitude, then it is not really easy to see the recirculation regions, uh, but they do exist, and this is how we can see them. If you come here to the vectors and click on vector plot, then this is a, a vector plot of the velocity. Um, if I click here, you'll see that you know, velocity components are now in the form of uh, a vector. Um, let's uh, scale up, uh, meaning that just artificially increase the scale of these vectors so that we have a better understanding of the flow field. Of course, it will be not looking very good, but if I zoom in here, zoom even further, then you can see that right downstream of the cylinder we have this recirculations the twin recirculations that appear very very close to the boundary and they don't really move with the flow because the Reynolds number is small just about 20 okay this was our first step but not what I'm really passionate about to talk to you about so case one we already did it it was a steady state solution now we're gonna work with the same model except for we tweak the properties so that we increase the Reynolds number to 1200 this time in order to do that the free stream velocity has to be increased to 10 meters per second and the dynamic viscosity should be uh, reduced so I go here in the next round we need to revise our model so after this point I'm going to revise this model so that it, it uh, simulates the case corresponding to the uh, one Carmen in the street or um, the vortex shedding so if Reynolds number is more than 1200 then we have to do a transient computation so change the setting to transient then I don't need to do any any changes here I keep that the fluid property though I have to change so I'm gonna select fluid 1 but we'll define as fluid 2 uh, based on the information I have the density remains the same but it reduced the uh, dynamic viscosity so this will be less value and I'm going to say no to this because I want both fluids to be there okay now going to the cell zone conditions I need to change the fluid type from fluid 1 to fluid 2 click on OK I do not need to do anything for the solid boundary so I keep it as is I have in in boundary conditions the only change that is needed is at the inlet at the inlet I need to increase the velocity the free stream velocity to 10 meters per second so this will be 10 instead of uh, just one again remember that we're giving the components of the velocity on the inlet boundary we're not giving uh, the magnitude clicking on OK then uh, we go to solution um, methods when it comes to methods then there is new, now a new uh, element that we can change and it's the transient formulation you can do first order implicit or second order implicit it's always a good idea to do computations in second order so I change that to second order do not need to change any controls here residuals are still 10 to the negative 6 so that's good um, and then I can also initialize this from uh, the inlet clicking on initialize it's gonna tell me that your previous camp computations are gonna um, be discarded I have no problem with that so I click on OK now the next step here which is something new is on calculation activities uh, in this step we are going to tell the software what information we want uh, to transfer to the uh, post processor or CFD post so if I save all the values that I gain every time step this is going to generate a significant amount of um, data 
which I may not necessarily need. So if I go to automatic uh, calculation activities, then on yeah, automatic export, click on create, then solution data export, a new window will open here. And I'm going to tell the type that I want is CFD ports compatible. Uh, on the right side, you see a list of the things, list of the parameters and quantities that you can transfer to the post processor. For example, I can choose static pressure. I know that's going to be interesting to look at. Um, velocity magnitude, the components of velocity, stream function, um, and possibly the uh, vorticity magnitude. Let me see if I can find that here. Oh, there it is. Okay, vorticity magnitude. On the left here, um, I can choose how often I want uh, these data to be saved on my hard drive because for each time step, there will be one file that includes all the information. So I'm, for now, I keep it as one uh, per time step. The file name is just simply three Fs and uh, the file will be appended with uh, with a time step. So this is okay for uh, if it, you can choose where these uh, files to be saved by default the software chooses the following location. So if you choose if you save your um, model as module 4 for example you can click on files then on DP then on FF then on fluent this is the location that the files will be created in. You'll see tons of files here for every little time step that you, you choose. You can change that. What I want you to uh, warn you about is very when we deal with unsteady computations, the amount of data that will be generated is extremely high. So if you, you're not careful, you can full, uh, you can fill your entire hard drive. Um, if you do this on a flash drive, which I don't recommend, that will definitely be filled very quickly. Anyways, keeping that, um, then clicking OK, um, and we're ready to start the computation. So if I click on Run Calculation, then the Run Calculation menu has significantly changed, because this time we're dealing with an honest steady computation. So first thing we need to define is a time step so time step size you want to start with a small time step if you choose a large time step your solution will not converge and then at, at this menu you give the number of time steps you want for example if i want to simulate 100 uh, seconds then i have to define uh, 10,000 time steps because this number multiplied by this number is going to give me the flow time. At each time step, I uh, will have the software solve all the uh, governing equations and uh, converge all of them and then march in time and goes to the next time step and next time step and goes on. So at each time step, my solution should converge. You have to tweak and control these numbers so that you get the most convergence behave, converging behavior. If you start with a very large time step, your solution will not converge. If you start with a small time step, most of the time you may have some difficulties in the first couple of time steps, but eventually you will get uh, convergence at each time steps. At each time steps, you can have as many iteration as you want, but let's say we choose a hundred which should not be that high at each time step but just in case and then we're ready to click uh, calculate if I click calculate the software will start the computation and once the first computation for first time step either converges or the number of iteration runs out, then it will march in time. Like this is now the second time step. It continues and continues all the way until uh, I gain a convergence. 
So depending on uh, your computational resource, this can take significantly a large amount of time or it may be uh, very fast. So uh, as you see, at each time step, my solution converges. Just follow these. and goes to the next time step. You should let the software to finish the number of uh, iterations and number of time steps that you uh, identified here. As I said, this process may take time. Honestly, the computations, they're usually very time consuming. If at any point you want to take out your results, you can click on stop at the end of time step. The solution will continue until the convergence appears. And then it says calculation complete. Then I can come here, for example, and take a look at velocity. So the flow is forming. I can see that the flow is being formed there, but it's not very mature. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on calculate and let the software run for some time and I pause the video and then um, I will continue the, explaining the results. Okay. Okay, uh, now what what I did, this the simulation is still running. I increased the time step to uh, 0 0.05 seconds. And it's been running for a while. Um, now I'm going to take a look. So I stopped the computation at the end of this time step. I let it run for like 10 minutes. Um, so, okay, so it seems like the time that we spend is now, uh, you know, so you can look at the flow time here. We, we have simulated about 3.92 seconds of flow time. Um, and if you look at the uh, residuals, see, uh, note that we don't have a very great uh, convergence. So the, the residual for continuity equation is reduced about to 10 to the minus 5. Ideally, this should go as low as, you know, 1 to the time to the negative 6. So you have to reduce the time step enough so this happens. But if you don't even do that, it gives you a good uh, qualitative uh, analysis. For a very accurate result, you have to work with very small time steps and get converges at every time step. But uh, just to save time, I am um, releasing that uh, limitation for now. Okay, so if I click on, let's say, velocity magnitude, or I'm sorry, this is vorticity magnitude, uh, apparently we have some, you know, changes in the flow field that we didn't saw before. Um, as another way of looking at this, I'm going to look at the stream functions. Stream functions now clearly, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be filled, clearly show a presence of some uh, flow activity down the, uh, downstream of this cylinder. So these are interesting things. Note that if I go to um, this folder now that I had defined, note the amount of files that are generated. So for every time step, we generated a data file that can be read by CFD post. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to now uh, keep this uh, paused and I go and run my uh, CFD post. You can either run this or you could get a result module and drop it here and then update this results and open this one.
Okay, now I need to basically read all the files that I created. So I click on this icon here, load results. Then I go to the address that those uh, files are located, meaning here I can just copy the address from here, go and paste it right here, and click on the first case file that I have, this one, and I make sure this says load complete history as a single case, and I open. It'll take a second, and I have uh, the geometry. Now, if I go to Tools and then click on Time Step Selector, note that all the time steps that I have has been uh, been moved to uh, to CFD Post. For example, if I choose, let's say, the final step, which by default it's there, I can close this, click on Contour Plot, and generate a contour plot of, let's say, um, a stream function, and just click Apply. You can see the flow activity down here, or you can change this to velocity. I'll see the flow activity right there. This is very interesting. Now I'm going to keep this and go to time step selector and choose a different time. Let's say I instead of 3.92 in the flow time, I choose 1.32 and click on apply. Then the flow field adjusts itself according to the time that I have. Well, since we have a lot of information here, we can generate an animation based on this results. I go to the very initial time step, I click on apply, of course nothing is there, and then click on this little icon which says animate time steps. A new window will open for me, and if I click on play here, then an animation will be generated based on the contour plot that you uh, already had. This, depending on your computation, this may take um, a long time or a small amount of time. But note, we can now follow the uh, the development of the flow on the back side of this uh, cylinder. So these are the two recirculation. Now they grow, and at some point the flow will be uh, unstable and the recirculation regions will start to detach from the surface. This is the vortex shading that we uh, explained in the beginning of the uh, learning module. So these vortexes, they detach and they kind of move with the flow and eventually they go outside of our solution domain. I can capture this video by um, going, uh, I can stop this and say save movie and give it different type that I want. I can generate a WMV or MPEG4, MP4 is more common so I'm going to go with that and then um, I want to repeat one time and on the options you can you know, control the image size. Um, I want to do an HD video 1080. Um, I'm not going to change anything else. I click OK. So as you see here, we developed a video which clearly shows the unsteady behavior of the flow passing the cylinder and we also simulated the vortex shedding. 
you could generate um, different videos by uh, simply defining a different contour plot. A more uh, illustrative contour plot for this situation is uh, vorticity magnitude. So if I go to, let's say, my first time step here, or let's start with the existing time step. If I click on vorticity magnitude, um, and then just to make it more clear, I'm going to say a maximum of 500, this, or maybe a slightly more or less. Okay, then going to first time step, clicking on apply, then I can animate this. I'm going to save the movie as, I can call it whatever I want, but I'm going to call it now VORTCT. And run it. Vorticity is a parameter that tells us how uh, fluid elements are uh, rotating along their own axis. So it's a measure of uh, the shear effect in the flow. So these two recirculation appear very clear. And let's see what happens at, as time goes on. So they kind of grow faster, they grow larger. Um, and at some point, we will see that uh, the flow becomes very unstable and these recirculation regions will detach from the back of the cylinder. You will see that in a second. pretty stable up to this point but they kind of move away from the cylinder Now it becomes unstable. The flow becomes unstable. Changes a bit and one recirculation detaches from uh, the surface. Another one follows that. And this behavior continues uh, as time progresses. So I can again go to my documents and a new video is generated for me as the word vorticity, which clearly shows uh, the behavior that we described. Okay, um, let's also take a quick look at the streamlines. So if I have a streamlines starting from the inlet, they are going to look like this at the end but as time goes on starting from here let's say in the middle you don't have that behavior it's increasing the number of points just to have more 
points and then I'm not going to generate a video but as we go on uh, continue and the flow progresses then the flow field will start to be uh, different and you can generate a video for this as well okay um, this summarizes this the video for this learning module in the next step um, I first of all you can look at additional resources under this link um, I'm going to assign uh, assignment 4 based on what you learn so in your assignment you're going to work with unsteady flow past a square tube or a uh, square prism um, the dimensions and fluid properties are given so you're going to do follow the same uh, steps that we did except for your geometry is different uh, down here I give you some more information about how the mesh is going to look like and all that so please take a look and I expect you to generate some animations and some counter plots based on the result um, as just one example this is a video in YouTube that was generated for this geometry your result may look similar to this or it may, might be different doesn't matter but at the end what we are looking for is this honest steady behavior um, past, um, past this square tube. Okay, this summarizes this video. Um, thank you for watching.